Last time, you saw me create a bottle opener using CAD and then define the two paths needed to mute it using CAM. We then save that program to a USB stick and today, we're going to run it on my style X5 Pro CNC milling machine. Once again, a huge thanks to Aaron Powder for tutoring me on all this. You should check out his channel, the Design Creativity and Technology channel on YouTube. Any mistakes you see in the video are mine. You can see on his channel, he does it right. I just tend to forget. Feel free to spot my many mistakes and post them in the comments. I'm not good enough to make a proper tutorial yet. I just consider this more a motivational video for those of you who are wondering if you can do this. You can. Now, something you should know about buying almost any machine tool, the general rule of thumb is you should expect to spend about the same on tooling as you do on the machine itself. Tooling is devices, cutter, and other various accessories needed to actually do anything useful. There are no bargains in tooling. Unless you find something at a garage sale, you will generally get what you pay for. Cheap tooling is low quality, so the general thought is not to bother with since you can hold very tight tolerance with it. I have my own thoughts on this, but I'm not a professional machinist, so I won't take any offense if you listen to them and ignore me. I'm a businesswoman. Here's my opinion on buying tools and tooling and how I came to feel this way. A while back, one of the neighborhood uncles who does electrical work for me came over with his helper. They were drilling holes with two hammer drills for conduit. The helper was using a really dodgy Chinese drill with a cracked case and the other a beautiful, very expensive looking Bosch drill which was clearly much easier to use. So the printer's guy starts complaining about his drill and the uncle says, That drill is good enough. I worked for two years with that drill and it bore me this drill, which is something I've come to agree with. Sayo took a pretty big leap of faith when they give me this CNC machine to show off. But in order to do that, I have to carefully budget for enough tooling to get started. Just because Sayo have faith in me doesn't mean other companies will lined up to donate tooling. I'm on my own until I can prove myself. In the real world, there are no money trees. We don't always have the option of buying the best tool money can buy. Sometimes we buy something that's good enough and if we need better, we use it to earn enough to buy something better. In this video, I use this $15 Banggood Edge Finder that I have been using since I got my CNC machine. And as you can see, it's marked up. There is a bit of discoloration on the side because like a lot of beginners, I was careless and didn't protect it properly. But that's okay because it's cheap and they are for me to learn with. Now, I know better and will go polish that up later. But I want you to see this is a good enough tool. Good enough for me and my school skill level for the kind of work I need to do. But that first CNC video I did made me just enough in Ad Emily to buy this, a 3D taster made in Germany, absolutely beautiful. Now, this is the white tool. But if I just start with it, I probably would have destroyed it and certainly would not have known how to maintain it. It's also a lot of money out of pocket. In this video, I'm also using cheap BD30 colors. These are from Banggood, same as the Edge Finder. You can find a few review videos on this from proper machinists. They don't like them very much because even though they're well made, they aren't good enough for very high precision work. But I'm not good enough for very high precision work either. And I don't need to do any. So these are good enough for most daily shop tasks. They are what I can afford and they are good enough to learn with. If I need better, they can earn me enough to pay for better. Prototyping, running a shop, even vlogging like me, you normally want a big CNC machine to make money. In my case, a good CNC video will get some ad clicks and make me enough to upgrade a few things. My CNC machine will get what it can pay for. I don't need a hole in the ground to 
dumb money into for shiny toys. If you are on a budget, these are good enough to do the work to buy you better. If you have the budget to start with the best and know how to take care of them and won't damage them, of course, buy the best. If you are a beginner like me, on a budget, still careless with maintenance and need to learn that lesson better, I think it's okay to buy whatever is good enough for now or will buy you better later. I extend this model to a lot of my two purchases. Sometimes I get really good stuff if I know exactly how to use it and I know I'll use it often, but often I get good in love and let it work for me. Earn is keep, use that tool to buy better. This tooling is from Banggood. I'm very happy with it. It's more than good enough for my needs. If you are a beginner, I think it's a great way to get started and keep costs under control until your machine starts paying for itself. I'll link to this in the description. If you're, if you're interested in a Sile X5 Pro or any Sile CNC machine, I'll put the link there as well. Let them know I sent you. Now, let's make some chips. First, I'll cut some aluminum stock to size on my bandsaw. I'm putting the 6mm M mill inside the collet. You have to brush the chips off and get everything clean or the parallels won't sit flat in the vise. These steel plates are the parallels. They raise the workplace up so the mill can reach it. I should have a piece of spring steel between them, but I could not find one. Next time. A few taps with the dead blow hammer takes out any small gaps. The spindle has a pneumatic clamp that holds our collet. Our collet is holding the edge finger so we can calculate the center point of our stock. As you recall from our cam setup, our program starts from the center. Now we see this stock. We are going to put the coordinate in the center. You can put it at the corner, but I'm going to just leave it at the center. So we need to tell the CNC machine where that is by touching the probe against each edge and pressing a button. Kind of like a blind person's cane. I'm changing from the edge finder to the 6mm M.
I need to tell the CNC machine how high above the workpiece it is, so I use a second 6mm M and gently touch the two to it. Now I just type in C minus 6, which is the diameter of the end mill, and I have my tool length. This isn't super precise, but it's good enough for this and quick. I'm using the pendant to manually advance the program. That way, if I made a mistake, I can quickly stop it so I don't crush the head and destroy something. Looks good. And now I can let the machine do its work and I just stand aside to monitor the milling process. Okay, one side is done. I'm going to flip the aluminum stock over and mill the other side flat. To be honest, this is pretty dodgy way to do this since my workpiece isn't held all that securely in the vise, but it's simple and fast to set up this way.
looks pretty good. Let's clean it up a little bit. Favorite kebab place, and I'm waiting for my dinner. Let's test this out. Yeah.